Hi guys, Mr. Gillen here and during this video we are going to have a look at equations and solving equations. So before we start, before we look at some examples, you hopefully have seen these before, but these are the, the three rules for equations that we're going to be using. And if you can remember these three rules, then there won't be many equations you won't be able to solve. So number one, always remember letters left, numbers right. When we say that, I mean left of equal sign, right of equal sign. Number two, opposite side, opposite operation. If something moves, then we use the opposite operation. Just remember that in terms of opposites, then adding goes with subtracting. Multiply, the opposite of that is divide. And if you square something, the opposite of squaring something is square root. But you should hopefully know that from changing the subject. And in the last one, this is purely from keeping your work in neat. The equal sign stays in the same place. So let's have a look at some examples then. We've got from the first one, we've got 5x subtract 4 is equal to 2x subtract 19. So, one thing to be careful of negative numbers can come into equations. So, make sure that you are nice and confident with them. Otherwise, that could cause a wee hiccup. So, let's think about our three rules. We want letters left, numbers right. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify things that are in the wrong place. So if I look at this just now, I've got 5x, so that's letters on the left hand side, so I'm happy with that. I've got a negative 4, which is a number, so that's on the wrong side. I want that to be on the right hand side of the equation. I've got 2x, which is on the right hand side of the equation. I want that to be on the left hand side. And I've got negative 19, which is a number, so that's in the right place. So as far as this equation is concerned, I want this negative 4 to be over on this side, and I want this 2x to be over on this side. So that's step one done. I've established what needs to be where. So my 5x hasn't moved. This 2x is moving over, opposite side, opposite operation. So if it's 2x on the right hand side, it's going to become take away 2x on the left hand side. The negative 19 stays in the same place. This negative 4, the subtract 4 is coming over. So it goes from negative 4 to add four. So that's me done with rule two. I've got my letters left, my numbers right, anything that's moved or changing, opposite side, opposite operation. Tidy it up a wee bit, so I've got 3x equals negative 15. If I'm solving an equation, think of it like changing the subject. I want to have x on its own. Currently, I've got 3x equals negative 15. So I need to have x on its own. So this time, the 3 is going to come over. On the left-hand side, it's multiplying. It's stuck to the 3x. The 3x are stuck together. So when it comes over, it's going to be dividing. So x is going to be negative 5. Sometimes your answers might not be whole numbers. Okay, that is quite a common thing. We're going to look at fractions later on in the video as well, how to deal with them. But sometimes you might find that your answer is a fraction. So let's have a look at this number two. I'm going to go through the same process again, the same steps. I'm going to identify what's in the wrong place. 
So seven X is fine. The plus two, well, that's numbers. So I want that to be coming over. The three X a letter. So that's going to have to shift over here. And the 20 is fine. It can stay in the same place. So 7x wasn't moving. The 3x is positive. So when it moves across opposite side, opposite operation, 20 stays. The plus 2 is moving over. Opposite side, opposite operation. So it becomes subtract 2. Again, tidy it up. So I've got 4x is equal to 18. I want to have x on its own. So that 4 has got to come across. So I'm left with 18 over 4. Hopefully, at that point, you've spotted that you can simplify this. So I can divide 18 and 4, I can divide them both by 2. So my final answer is going to be 9 over 2. So moving on, we can be faced sometimes with brackets coming into equations as well. We don't want the brackets to be there. So we've got to use a bit of prior knowledge before we can start solving the equation. We need to break the bracket out. So remember, if you are breaking a bracket, you're multiplying everything that's inside the bracket by the term that is on the outside of the bracket. So I'm going to have 4x subtract 8 equals x plus 25. At that point, I'm now able to start working with the equation to solve it. And I'm going to go through my three steps again. So I've got letters left, numbers right. 4x is fine. The negative 8 is on the wrong side, so it's going to have to come across. The x is in the wrong place, so it's going to have to come across here. And my 25 on its own is fine. It's in the right place. Rewrite that out. So I've got 4x. The x that's coming across, well, it's a positive on the right-hand side. So it's going to become negative on the left-hand side. The negative 8 is coming across opposite side, opposite operation. So it becomes plus 8. Tidy it up. So 4x take away x is going to give me 3x. 25 plus 8 is going to give me 33. As always, I want x on its own. So I need to get rid of this 3 that's stuck onto it. Because it's stuck on, it's multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So in this case, x is 11. Okay, let's have a look at number four. Number four has in a bracket 4x plus c, then bracket x subtract 2 equals bracket 2x subtract 3 all squared. So before I even start doing this, I'm going to write it out again to make it look a wee bit easier for myself. And the part I'm going to make look easier, 2x minus 3 squared. If you square something, then you're multiplying it by itself. So I'm going to change that to 2x minus 3, bracket 2x minus 3. Same idea as the previous example. I've got an equation, but I've got brackets involved. So what I'm going to want to do here is I want to expand the brackets. And I'm going to bring in another piece of prior knowledge. I've got two sets of brackets, so I'm going to use FOIL. And remember, FOIL is first 
outside, inside, and last. Deal with my first set on the left hand side first. So I've got 4x multiplied by x is 4x squared. Then my outside, 4x multiplied by negative 2 is subtract 8x. Careful with your negative numbers. 3 times x is plus 3x. And then 3 times negative 2, negative 6. Now deal with the right hand side, same process 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. And then negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 9. Again, take the time to simplify it, tidy things up, collect terms on either side. So I've got 4x squared, negative 8x plus 3x is subtract 5x minus 6 equals 4x squared, subtract 12x plus 9. So I've now got rid of all my brackets. I now need to put my rules into place. I want letters left and I want numbers right. So 4x squared, it is still letters, so that will stay here. Subtract 5x, still letters, so that's going to stay. Subtract 6, that's going to come across. 4x squared needs to come across here as does the negative 12x. Now, you could do this in three stages. I'm doing it all at once just now. So let's write it out. Let's deal with the 4x, the squareds first. So I've got 4x squared. The 4x squared that's on the right-hand side. So this 4x squared here. When it comes across, it is going to become the opposite, which is subtract 4x squared. So I'm going to 4x squared, subtract 4x squared, take away 5x. My negative 12x, when it comes across, opposite side, opposite operation, becomes 12x equals 9. When the negative 6 comes across, it becomes opposite side, opposite operation, plus 6. So it still looks a wee bit complicated just now, so let's tidy up this left-hand side and the right-hand side. 4x squared, subtract 4x squared, well that's 0. Negative 5x plus 12x gives me 7x equals 15. So just to cover that again, the 4x squared, subtract 4x squared, they've cancelled themselves out. I want to have x on its own, so the last thing that I need to do is divide by 7. Double check if you can simplify it. There's nothing you can divide 15 and 7 by that isn't 1, so I'll just leave my answer as 15 over 7. Now that's a very complex equation. Um, you might possibly see that in an exam or a test scenario. And if you're comfortable with that, then fantastic. So let's look at some equations then that involve fractions. Everybody's favourite. For number five, we've got a half x plus three equals four. One of the key things to remember when you're dealing with fractions in an equation is we want to try and get rid of them. We want to eliminate them. 
How do we do that? Well, we multiply everything in the equation by the lowest common of the pool. And by doing that, it allows us to eliminate the fractions. So I'll just add a wee bit onto that. Lowest common multiple of the denominators. Let's have a look at number five then. We've got only one fraction, so we don't need to find a lowest common denominator or a lowest common multiple. All we need to do is multiply everything by two. So let's go ahead. What I quite like doing for this is I like writing that underneath everything. So a half times two, well, that's just going to be one. You can, if you want, you can write it as two over two, x plus six equals eight. Good practice to maybe do that. Two over two simplifies to one. So we're left with x add six equals eight. At that point, we're going back into our three rules. We don't want this 6 on the left hand side. So we're going to take that over and we've got x equals 8. Take away 6. x equals 2. So we need to eliminate the fraction first. We do that by multiplying everything in the equation by the lowest common multiple of the denominators and Question five or example five case, we only had one fraction. So what we had to do was multiply everything in the equation by its denominator. Let's have a look at number six. We have got one third x plus two over five equals five. So this time we've got two fractions. We've got two denominators. So we need a lowest common multiple. What is the multiple that appears in the three and the five times table first? Well, it's going to be 15. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to multiply everything in the equation by 15. A common mistake here is pupils tend to only multiply the fractions. Make sure you're multiplying everything in the equation. So if we think about it, a third times 15, if you're not sure how to do that, think of it in terms of 15 over 1 times 1 over 3 becomes 15 over 3. Two over five times 15, well, 15 times two is 30 over five. And then five times 15 is 75. I'm gonna tidy this up again because I have noticed quite quickly that I can simplify this down. So 15 divided by three is five. 30 over 5 is 6. And then I've got my 75. At this point, again, it's now a familiar scenario for me. I've got no fractions, I've got no brackets, and I can go ahead and I can solve the equation. So I've identified the 6 is in the wrong side. So 5x equals 75. It was positive 6, so it's going to come across opposite side, opposite operation. It becomes negative 6. So 5x 
is equal to 69. I want x on its own. So the last thing I need to do is get rid of that 5. And I'll leave it like that. So for number 6, my solution is x equals 69 over 5. So our last example is a, a typical exam style question. We've got a combination this time of brackets and fractions. Two things that in order for me to solve this equation, I want to try and eliminate. So the first thing that I'm going to do just now is I'm going to work to eliminate the fractions first. It's easier to get rid of the fractions and then expand my bracket than expand the bracket and then eliminate the fractions. So this time I'm looking for a lowest common multiple of two and three. So I'm going to be multiplying by six. So again, I quite like writing multiply by six under every term in the equation. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to make sure that I'm multiplying everything in the equation. So I'm left with 6 over 2, x plus 3. It's worth noting that the half and the x plus 3 are joined together. That's why I've only multiplied by times 6 for the fraction. Plus 6 over 3 is equal to 6. Tidy it up again, so 6 over 2 is 3, x plus 3. 6 over 3 is 2, equals 6. So that's me now eliminated my fractions from the equation. I'm now going to break the brackets so that I can start to solve the equation. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 3 is going to give me 9, plus my 2 equals 6. I quite like to just tidy things up before I start manipulating the equation. So when I tidy that up, I've got 3x plus 11 equals 6. Work through my, my three rules now. I've got 3x is going to equal 6. Subtract 11, opposite side, opposite operation. So 3x is equal to negative 5. And the last part I need is x on its own. So I'll get negative 5 over 3. Okay, guys, that's all from me just now. As always, if you've got any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. This is Mr Gillen signing off. Speak to you all soon.